Welcome back. As we've been reporting for the last two months, the North Dakota State Investment Board has hired banks and money managers that are now under investigation by the attorneys general in 19 states. The companies under investigation, including at least three of them here in North Dakota, are members of the Net Zero Banking Alliance, a United Nations-backed group working to phase out the use of fossil fuels with the goal of attaining net zero emissions by 2050. According to the multi-state investigation, these banks and money managers could starve loans and investments to energy and agricultural industries here in North Dakota. As I reported last week, nearly every member of the State Investment Board, along with its chairman, Lieutenant Governor Brent Sanford, and our Attorney General Drew Wrigley are refusing to talk about this issue. This as states across the country are getting vocal about their opposition to this form of investing criteria. Utah State Treasurer Marlo Oaks presented to a North Dakota Legislative Committee explaining his state's stance. Free market capitalism really cannot exist with ESG because if free markets existed, ESG wouldn't work. And it really requires this collusion and commitment to an agenda. So these asset owners are to act in the sole financial best interest of their beneficiaries. That's not happening uh, today because you have uh, asset owners that have decided that, that this agenda is more important than, uh, than the, their fiduciary obligation. So who are the other state investment board members refusing to answer any questions about the board's decision to hire these banks or comment on the ongoing multi-state investigation? As of now, we have reached out to and have not heard back from Rob Leck, the superintendent of Jamestown Public Schools, Cody Mickelson, a teacher for Jamestown Public Schools, Claire Ness, the deputy attorney general, John Godfried, the state insurance commissioner, Adam Miller, a state government employee, Mel Olson, a retired teacher and administrator, and Yvonne Smith, a retired state employee. These public officials are responsible for overseeing more than $20 billion in our pension and legacy funds, much of it derived from taxes from our oil and gas industry. During last legislative session, Senate Bill 2291 prohibited social investing or commitment of public funds for the purpose of obtaining an effect other than a maximized return to the state. In other words, investments that are not in the best financial interest of pensioners or the state. Representative Sebastian Ertelt raises the question of whether the State Investment Board is in compliance with SB 2291. The law has been in effect for approximately a year and a half. To have had done a comprehensive review of their current investments at the time the bill uh, went into effect to understand whether or not they were in compliance. And if they were not, regardless of what anyone's opinion on the board was about investing in such projects, they should have immediately complied with the law. And if they were not in compliance with the law, that should have been made public. And I appreciate uh, KX for, for bringing this uh, to the public's knowledge. Ertzout says that the State Investment Board additionally needs to request an attorney general opinion on the board's investment portfolio. We've reached out to all four banks in North Dakota. Two have responded, and you'll be hearing about that next report. KX News has also begun reaching out to the members of the Budget Stabilization and Legacy Fund Advisory Board that recommends investment policies for the state. Wow, a lot to sort through. I know you've been doing so much homework, and yeah. it'll be really interesting to, to hear from these It's banks. definitely going to be an issue that we should expect to pop up during the next legislative okay. session. All right. Very good. Thank you, Josh. And now